All right, continuing along with our Google My Business uh, optimization. This part here is related to the information portion of completing the Google My Business listing. Uh, so let me just go ahead and pull up, uh, click up. All right, so this is the information optimization task and inside of it, I have all of the subtasks listed. All right, so just getting right into it, the first step is to confirm the NAP, which is the name, address, and phone number. This is very important to make sure that this matches exact to uh, Google My Business, matches the website, and also matches all the citations that we build. Um, this is uh, an important ranking factor for local businesses that they are identical. So basically what that means is when I go to the website, Color Bright Painting, I seem to make sure that the address that we have here matches the address that we have on our Google My Business, and then we also use the same address on our citations. All right, so let me pull up the Google My Business listing. So if I pull this up here, we can confirm the name, Color Bright Painting of Long Island, and we have the address in Greenlawn, New York. The, uh, the street address uh, can be hidden in some cases, so it depends on the business if they want to, uh, if they serve as clients at their address or not. Um, every service is a little bit different. For example, plumbers very uh, often don't have a, an office per se where they serve as clients, so sometimes they'll hide their address but they may still show the city, the state, and the zip code. So let's focus on Greenlaw, New York, 11740. And I'll just go back over to the website. So we've got Greenlaw, New York, 11740. The title of the website, this is the logo, but the actual title, which I can see up here, is Color Bright Painting of Long Island. You can, can uh, confirm that by viewing the source and just looking for the title tag. So if you want to do a search, I'll just do control F to find and then title. And you can see up here is the very first one, color bright painting of Long Island. All right, so that's good. So that's the name portion of it. And then obviously when we build our citations for things like Yelp and uh, Foursquare, whatever it may be, then we want to use this exact name as well. All right. Uh, so going back over to Google My Business, so we've got the name, the address, and then the phone number. Uh, if I go to info, our phone number is listed right here. Uh, this is the Google Ads extension of the phone number. We also have the phone number listed right here. So this is what we wanna look for, 631-242-1534. And let me pull up the website, go to the Contact Us page, and this is the exact same phone number, so perfect. And again, when we build the citations, we will make sure all this stuff still continues to match. All right, so uh, we've, we've pretty much uh, completed this action. Just keep in mind when you do the citations that it has to be the same as well because the citations will do uh, you know, a few in month one, um, depending on the package that you sold, usually around 50 citations or so. And then we'll uh, continue that each month following, uh, just kind of dripping out more citations. But again, keeping with the, the plan of uh, consistency. All right, so let's go ahead and close that task. We finished that. Uh, the next thing is to add the service areas. So the service areas essentially are just the cities. So I'll reference again, the info doc or info file that the client submitted during onboarding. And let's pull that up. And let's go to more. And we're just going to look at all of these cities here. So we have this full list and I'm going to compare that against, I've already started filling this out, what we have here in the service areas. It's important when we fill this out that we actually put in uh, the city and the state. So obviously it's always New York for this client. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of split screen this. And I'm going to add these 
to this one as well. Um, just to make sure I'm not missing any. All right, so we've got Montauk. And usually it'll just kind of quickly let you know. Uh, it'll start suggesting the city and state for you. All right, so that's all I'm doing here is just plugging all these in. All right, and it just adds them down here dynamically. Whoops. Go back. Make sure it saved my changes there. All right. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it didn't save it, so I'm just going to do this again. I'm just going to pause the video right here, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to add all of these cities. And then I'm going to click apply and uh, then I'm going to check back in here. Okay, so I just updated all of these and just maximize this. All right, so I've added all of these service areas now and I clicked apply. And sometimes it takes a few days for it to get approved and published live. All right, so we're all set with that. Let's go back over to ClickUp. All right, so going down the page. Okay, so we verified, uh, whoops, actually this is not what I wanted, this is the info sheet. All right, added service areas, yes we did that. Let's close it. All right, let's update the hours of operation. So the client uh, filled these out in the type form. All right, so we know Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday, 7 to 3, and then Sunday they're closed. All right, so let me pull up. Google My Business and update the hours. Sunday closed and uh, let's open the, start selecting 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let me just double check it. I believe that's what it was. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right. And it's the same for all of these, actually. Oops. 7 a.m. 5 p.m. No, not Saturday was, I believe, 7 a.m. still to 3 p.m. So let's just put that in and let me confirm real quick. Uh, where is this at? Okay, 7 to 3 on Saturday. Okay, good. Let's verify 7 a.m. across the board. 5 p.m. all the way up to Saturday, it's three, and then Sunday closed. All right, good, apply it. All right, perfect. So the hours of operation are good. And now we're going to move on to, uh, just closing that out, finished hours of operation. Let's add a short name. Let's go back over to Google My Business. And we're going to add a short name right here. Uh, if you don't see the phone number there already, just make sure you plug that in. Um, you should uh, definitely, that goes with the NAP really, the name, address, and phone number. So uh, just double make sure that you have that there. The short name, so I usually stick to the core business name. Um, so in this case, Color Bright Painting. Uh, I know the full name is of Long Island, but I guess that will fit. So I will put the whole thing, Color Bright painting of Long Island, all lowercase, no spaces, and then apply it. Okay, so that's under review, that's fine. Make sure that you have the proper website URL here. I'm going to make sure that we have HTTPS. All right, the secure version of the site. All right. Uh, 
Don't worry about that. Let me go back over to ClickUp just so we're staying on track. All right, so we added the short name. Um, if we have any attributes to add, so let me look. Um, attributes would be things like uh, veteran owned, veteran led, or uh, women led. Um, it's actually more under highlights, so it's attributes and highlights. Um, in this case, uh, actually, she is, it is a woman led business, so I will apply that. I mean, don't select it unless it's true. So just make sure you know who your client is. All right, and let me go back over to ClickUp just to stay on track. I'm just gonna update the name of this. Okay, all right, so we did that. Close that out, add the business description. And I believe I already added one here. So for the description, you can see what we used. Um, yeah, it has to be under 750 characters. You don't want to get too crazy with it. Um, I'm actually going to change the name here. So in the middle of doing this for the client, we actually decided to, with along with the business owner, to focus their name not just on color bright painting but of long island to differentiate themselves because there's like six other color bright paintings in the area so color bright painting of long island is a full service painting company located in long island new york we are a family business that has been painting homes in suffolk county comma new york and nassau county comma new york for over 50 years blah 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 right so just make sure that and spelling and punctuation and correct spelling counts. Uh, so definitely read over it and make sure it makes sense. All right, so try to maximize at least 500 words. Um, excuse me, at least 500 characters. All right, um, at a minimum. So I'm going to apply that. All right, so we added the description. Uh, you can add an opening date if you want. Uh, in this case, the business owner didn't want to uh, put anything here, so I'm not going to. All right, but it's good just, just to uh, have this as part of your checklist. So let's go ahead and close that. All right, Google Ads phone number. I already showed you that earlier. Um, so it's good practice just to, if you're using like a tracking phone number or something, you could put that here as well. But uh, for the purpose of this, we're just going to insert the same one as here. And this isn't really used until you start running extension ads. So it's a little beyond the scope of what we're covering here, but just to have it ready to go, you can plug that in. All right, and all right, next we want to do the service categories and subcategories. And this gets a little, it's it's actually very simple, but uh, but the process to decide what to use can be a little more involved. So when I click on this, we've got some more information. Basically, uh, you have to create a category that Google already has for you. Uh, and what that means is, as you type it, they will recommend a category. So down here, for ser it's under services, right? So if I click on services, this is the primary category. If I go to edit it, I'll just click yes. But you can see that I can't just put in painter masters or anything like that. It's as you start to type a certain word, then you're given choices, right? So how do you decide which one to use? Well, I have a process for that. And let me just go back over here to keep us on track. Uh, the rule of thumb really is to select the business category categories that make the most sense for your business. And you have to be very selective as to what your primary category is going to be. Google really hates to see this taken advantage of. I um, mean, you know, the algorithm just is not in favor of this sort of thing. Um, and you'll have access to read through all of this here. But basically what we want to do is look through competitors, not really competitors, um, similar businesses in major cities. So I'd like to focus on cities like 
Chicago, Houston, San Diego, uh, Miami, Orlando. I mean, you can do New York City as well. Sometimes I avoid New York City just because it's kind of its own animal where there's just so much foot traffic. It kind of takes on a different way of SEO even working there. Um, I guess just pick something kind of similar to wherever your client is located. So if their business is more rural, suburban, then pick you know a, a big city that's similar to that. And if it's a more urban city, then you can look at places like New York City and stuff like that. Um, but the way we do this is um, we'll look at, like I said, these similar businesses. So I'll look up, uh, so I'll go to Google and might type in something like San Diego Painter and just see what's coming up here. And if we look, you can see this is the, now this is an ad, right? So the category, the primary category is listed here. So painter, painter, painter. Um, they aren't all going to be that. Some could be painting company and, and, and some other things uh, such as that. So let me uh, show you a tool that I like to use to reverse engineer uh, this process. It's called plepper.com. This is not my tool, but I just enjoy using it for this purpose. So what I'll do is first I will go into Google directly and I'll find, I'll do a search for a company. So let's say I'm going to look up, let's do Chicago. I'm gonna look up uh, Chicago painter. Probably painters, right? Just be a little more specific. And you can try variations of this just to kind of uh, test it out. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to look up Chicago Painters Inc. All right. Uh, so let's go back over to this tool. And I'm just going to start typing in that business name, Chicago Painters Inc. Until I find it. And there it is. And then I'm going to put in something like painter or painting um, and then click search. And what it's going to do is going to look for the categories and alternative categories that this Google My Business listing has. Now, if you look from the maps, you can only see the main category. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and see uh, what the top businesses are doing because we want to emulate them even if it's in a smaller city because we know it's working in a big city, right? And Inside of Google My Business, the thing is, is we can add multiple categories. I could add another category for painting uh, store, paint store, painting lessons, right? There's, I mean, that's not really applicable, but I could do painting, right? So it's like, which one do I pick? It's going to get the best results. Well, instead of guessing, we're just going to look at what our competition's already doing. Uh, are they selecting just one primary category and focusing on that? Do they have several categories? Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to find out. So pull up this tool here and we can see, we're gonna look under your current category. So we have their primary category is painter. But they also have painting and they also have pressure washing. Now pressure washing is, uh, it's a complimentary service because before you get your house painted, typically they'll pressure wash. And if I go over to that listing, we can see that if we wanted to add pressure washing as a service, we can most certainly do that. Um, I'm not going to adjust anything right now because we're still just analyzing the data. Uh, so let me go back over. So we've already identified that um, this, this particular company, uh, what was it? Chicago Painters Inc. They're ranking number one in maps and they have three different categories. Okay. So it's, it's, it's possible that they don't have to just focus on one. Uh, now I'll just take this a little bit further and look up some other companies. So, uh, I'll look up someone like Houston painters and let me see if I can see a map listing. All right. So I don't see any maps here. Um, I could go to maps directly, just might not be showing in my location and I can see Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually pick the company with less uh, stars, even though um, this one's number one, because here's a guy who's 4.6, 59 reviews, 
And here's a guy with 4.9, 107 reviews, and this guy's actually outranking this guy. So in my uh, uh, analysis from this, I can pretty much assume that all things being equal, this guy is more optimized for his Google My Business still because it's not always the best reviews that, that get ranked. So I'm gonna look up and see what this guy's doing. Next door painting dash Houston Painting Company. All right, let me just look that up. So I'll go back here. Put in next door painting. And here it is right here. And then I'll look up painter and then search. All right, and let's just wait. Let that load. longer than the normal and then uh, this website is free but after so many searches I believe it asks you to register so you can do that for free as well all right so this one only has painter as their main category that's all they're focusing on now keep in mind this does not show us subcategories it shows us category it shows us the primary category and then it also shows us the um, the secondary categories, but does not show us the subcategories. So these are subcategories and Google just tells you these, or just gives you these um, by default and you can just click them on or click them off depending on if they apply to you or not. So I've already clicked and checked the ones that apply and you can add other services as well by clicking add custom service and then typing it in. And that is just part of the subcategory for you versus adding multiple main categories but again you only get one primary these other ones would just be kind of supplementary um, but going back to our analysis this one's only uh, ran, uh, only focusing on painter and they're doing very well so that's their main focus um, so just to kind of uh, cut to the chase here I've already done this analysis and this research and uh, you know I pulled up about eight different uh, competitors or not competitors, sorry, similar businesses in other major websites. And based on that analysis, it looked like almost all of them were focusing on just painter with a hundred percent. The only one being different, that first one I actually showed you Chicago painter. So what does that tell me? Well, it's not impossible to select multiple categories for Google, my business. So if I wanted to come here and I wanted to add another category in this one uh, and I wanted it to be painting. I could do that. I could make this painting. I could add another one after that and make that pressure washing. But based on what I've seen, the people who are having the best results in maps, even if they're not ranked with the most stars, are focusing exclusively on one category and it's painter. Um, so that's what I've done. I've selected painter as the category. I've checked off all of the ones that apply and then I've just gone in and I added house painting and pressure washing as subcategories that fall underneath this main category. And this, I believe, will get us far better and faster results because it shows that we're not trying to stuff the algorithm with all kinds of things. We are a painting company first and foremost and uh, essentially we just reverse engineered what's already working out there for the major cities. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is how I've set that up. You can go in here and you could add more custom services. So if I wanted to add something other than house painting, you know, maybe I put, you know, shed painting. I don't know what could be um, lots of different options. That's part of the uh, keyword, keyword research you might uh, find um, as you go through this. But like I said, these are the ones and every category is going to have its own subcategories that Google will recommend to you and you can just like I said click the ones that apply don't click them all because if you don't do water damage then there's no sense in putting it there it just doesn't uh, doesn't fit the business then don't do it all right so that is uh, how we update the uh, the categories here um, for the Google my business listing all right so I just backed out there uh, let's go back into ClickUp. So I can close this out, pretty much done with that. 
and let me go back. All right, so we added the categories and the subcategories. We'll close that out. And then we want to add some storefront pictures. So this is where we ask the owner to provide them. If, if, um, if it's not available, then we can use a cover photo of something uh, of some sort. But, uh, you know, really, I just wait. I don't really like to put a generic photo up here because uh, it's supposed to represent the business. Uh, let's go back over to Google My Business. Uh, so here where we add photos, uh, I would like to put one here under the exterior of the business. And they've already got some, some images here, but I want to put one of the actual uh, business itself. Usually uh, I'll actually use it as the cover photo. So you can put it, you can put it here in the exterior and then also uh, I'd replace out the cover photo with that storefront picture. Uh, so if you have that image of the storefront, go ahead and put it in the cover photo, and then you can also add it to the exterior. If you don't have that, ask the owner to provide it. Just let them know it's important. Um, it's actually great if they could just take the picture on their phone and send you that exact file, because then it will already be stamped with that XM data with the coordinates of the business. And, uh, you know, it's just obviously it looks and because it is an actual picture that's local to the business. So this client is currently just working on getting that uh, storefront picture for us. And once they do, I'll go ahead and just upload it here to the cover section uh, to make sure we have that. All right, let me go back over to ClickUp. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of leave this for now so I have a reminder to come back to it. Uh, and I'm gonna move on. So adding a business video. Uh, really same thing, uh, this customer, excuse me, this client, uh, let me go back over to Google My Business. Uh, this client doesn't have a video yet, um, but once they do, this is where we would put it. We'd add a video just like this. And uh, when you name the video, it's best if you name it uh, with the brand name of the business as part of the video. So it could be called, the file name uh, should be named something like Color Bright Painting of Long Island uh, Information Video. Right, so as long as the brand name, the full brand name, the, the full Google My Business name precedes whatever else you want to add, uh, that's the, the ideal way to do this. And uh, let me go back over to ClickUp. I uh, just want to see something else. I'm just going to put that note in here actually. Uh, one thing you could do is if the business is reluctant to create a video and you just want to add even more value, um, you could go over to their website and just look at their portfolio or uh, something that would make some good videos. So here's a, some before and after pictures. And you could really just create like a PowerPoint slideshow video with maybe some background music. And if you go to a site like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, there are video gigs where you can find someone to make simple videos with uh, some music in them. So you might use something like this. You could uh, either reference this URL to the provider of that uh, gig, or you can actually download the photos yourself and just give them to them that way. But ideally, you're going to get a video from the actual client. And uh, you know if you can get them on camera, even better. It's just going to be that much... Uh, uh, better for the Google My Business page. All right, so that is all of the information stuff for what we want to complete here. Uh, let's, let me just uh, go back over here, and just make sure, do a once over. Uh, all of this other stuff you can complete, you can fill out, like if you have a, an appointment URL with a uh, that you actually want them to, to use, uh, opening date, we already added photos. So essentially some of these sections, if I click that, just takes me into the photo section here, which we already did. And, you know, for the appointment URL, you could actually use the contact page form. So let's grab that URL actually. And paste that in here. Let's 
save that. And that is it. Everything else looks good. Um, so let's go back over to ClickUp. Do our final once over. All right, back out here. All right, so I will leave these two open for myself, but obviously when you finish them, uh, you know, make sure that you close them out. And I'm actually going to add that other task here to save that and I'll close that all right so our uh, our Google my business uh, information is completed uh, that's it for this video I'll see you in the next one